You put in the work at the gym, but the results just aren't there. You hear a million different things, lift heavy for strength, do a ton of reps for size, run for hours for endurance. What if there was one definitive science-backed blueprint from one of the world's top experts to end the confusion? Dr. Andy Galpin, the human performance scientist who coaches everyone from UFC champions to weekend racers, has laid out that exact game plan. In this video, you get the precise principles to train for insane strength, maximum muscle, or next level endurance. No more guessing games. First things first, before we build the plan, we have to know what we're building. Strength, size, and endurance aren't just words you hear in the gym, they are completely different physiological changes in your body. Your body is an incredible adaptation machine. It responds specifically to whatever you throw at it. This is a core idea in exercise science called the SAD principle, specific adaptation to impose demand. Think of it this way. You don't train for a marathon by only lifting super heavy weights. And you don't become a power lifter by only jogging. You get what you train for. So let's break down what we're even talking about. Strength isn't about how big your muscles look. It's about how much force you can produce, period. It's your brain and nervous system getting better at firing your muscle fibers all at once to move a heavy object one time. It's basically a software update for your muscles. Hypertrophy, or muscle size, is exactly what it sounds like. Making your muscle fibers physically thicker. This is all about creating the right kind of stress that tells your body it needs to build more actual tissue, making the muscle bigger. This is a structural change, like adding more bricks to a wall. Endurance is your ability to fight off fatigue and just keep going. This could be muscular endurance, like cranking out 50 push-ups, or it could be cardiovascular endurance, like running for an hour straight. This is less about pure force and more about your body's energy systems and how well it gets oxygen where it needs to go. Getting these differences is the critical first step. The main thing driving strength is intensity. The main thing driving size is volume. Knowing this, lets us stop throwing random exercises at the wall and actually start training with a purpose. The Blueprint for Raw Strength If your goal is just to get brutally strong, to lift the absolute most weight possible, your training has to be dialed in for one thing, producing maximal force. You're teaching your central nervous system to fire on all cylinders. To get this done, Dr. Galpin champions a classic, dead simple framework. It's called the three to five rule. Here's the game plan. Exercises. Pick three to five big compound movements for your workout. These are the classics that use the most muscle. Squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead press. Reps. Do three to five reps per set. That's it. This low rep range forces you to use a weight that's heavy enough about 75% to 90% of your one rep max to trigger a pure strength adaptation. Sets, you'll do three to five hard, working sets for each exercise. Rest, take a full three to five minutes of rest between your sets. This will feel way too long, but it is absolutely non-negotiable. Your nervous system needs that time to fully recover so you can give 100% effort on every single set frequency. You run this kind of workout three to five times per week. The beauty of the three to five rule is that it's all about quality, not quantity. Every rep is heavy, it's intentional, and it's all designed to boost your neurological drive. You're not training to failure. You're not chasing a pump. You are training to generate force. This is how you get truly, measurably strong. The Blueprint for Maximum Muscle Size, Hypertrophy Okay, but what if you don't care about being brutally strong? What if you just want to look like you can move a piano? If your main goal is building the most muscle possible, the rules of the game change entirely. Strength training will build some muscle, sure, but a plan built for pure hypertrophy 
focuses on different triggers, total training volume and metabolic stress. Here is Dr. Galpin's blueprint for getting bigger, reps. The sweet spot for growth is usually somewhere between six and 15 reps per set. Most people find that eight to 12 reps is where the magic happens. This range gives you the perfect mix of mechanical tension and metabolic stress to tell your muscles to grow. Sets. For hypertrophy, volume is king. You're shooting for 10 to 25 total hard sets for each muscle group, spread across the week. So for chest, you might do four sets of bench and four sets of dumbbell flies on Monday, then another four sets of incline press on Thursday. That's 12 total sets for the week. Rest, forget those long, lazy rest periods. For hypertrophy, you're resting for much shorter times, usually between 30 and 90 seconds. This short rest cranks up metabolic stress, which is a massive signal for muscle growth. Intensity. The weight is going to be lighter than it is for strength, somewhere in the 60% to 80% range of your one rep max. The goal isn't just to move the weight, it's to feel the muscle working, and you'll often train much closer to failure than you would for strength. This is all about creating the perfect storm of signals to force your muscles to adapt by getting bigger. You're not just updating the software, you're upgrading the hardware itself. If clear science first training is your thing, tap subscribe so you never lift in the dark again. The blueprint for unstoppable endurance. But what if your goal isn't just about strength or size, but about the ability to go and go and just not stop? That is endurance. Training for endurance means you're rewiring your body's energy production and oxygen delivery. It's a totally different demand so it needs a totally different plan. For muscular endurance, the kind that lets you crank out push-ups for days, the name of the game is high reps and very little rest. Reps, you're thinking 15 to 30 reps per set, maybe even more, or you can do timed sets. Just do the exercise for a full minute without stopping. Rest, keep rest periods super short, like 30 seconds or less. This forces the muscle to get better at clearing out waste, so it can keep working. Intensity. The weight has to be light, somewhere between 30% and 60% of your one rep max. For cardiovascular endurance, we're talking about the whole system. This is what most people just call cardio. Type. This is any continuous activity, running, cycling, swimming, rowing. Duration. Sessions are longer, usually from 20 minutes to an hour, or even more. Intensity. For your classic steady state cardio, you want a moderate intensity around 60% to 80% of your max heart rate. Another amazing tool is high intensity interval training, or HIIT, where you go all out for a short burst, then recover for a moment and repeat. Endurance training isn't about one massive burst of force, it's about producing sustainable force over and over again for as long as you can. Putting it all together, the art of concurrent training. Okay, so the big question, the one everyone asks, this is all great, but can I do more than one at a time? The answer is a huge yes, but you have to be smart about it. This is called concurrent training, and the trick is to manage something called the interference effect. Dr. Galpin and other scientists have shown that getting stronger doesn't really hurt your endurance. In fact, it can make you a better, more efficient runner. The interference usually goes the other way. Doing massive amounts of long distance endurance work can sometimes get in the way of your absolute top end strength and size goals, especially if you're already pretty advanced. So how do you combine them without messing things up? Pick a priority. Be honest with yourself. What's most important to you right now? Getting stronger, bigger, or having more endurance? Your answer to that question decides how you set up your week. Your number one priority workout should always be done first, when you're fresh. If strength is the goal, your three to five workout happens at the start of your week and the start of your session. Separate your hard days. If you can, don't do a brutal leg day and a long run on the same day. 
Try to separate them by at least six to eight hours, or even better, put them on completely different days. This gives your body a chance to recover and adapt to each thing you're throwing at it. If you're a beginner, just work. Seriously, if you're new to training, don't overthink this. For the first six to 12 months, you're gonna get stronger, bigger, and have better endurance pretty much no matter what you do. Just show up and be consistent. Listen to your body. This is the most important rule of all. A perfect program on paper is useless if you can't stick to it. If you're constantly wrecked, painfully sore, or getting hurt, it's not the right program for you. You have to adjust things to a level that you can actually recover from. The real art of fitness for the long haul is knowing when to zero in on one thing and when to blend them together. So that's it. The confusion is over. The blueprint is clear. If you want to be strong, you live by the three to five rule, low reps, heavy weight, long rest. If you want to build muscle, you chase volume, moderate reps and weight, short rest, and hitting that 10 to 25 set target per muscle group each week. And if you want to build endurance, you focus on duration and repetition, high reps or long cardio sessions with almost no rest. Your body will become whatever you ask it to be. So stop training randomly and start training with intention. Pick your main goal, use the right blueprint, and just be consistent. That is the ultimate plan for unlocking what you're actually capable of. What is your number one training goal right now? Strength, size, or endurance? Drop it in the comments below. And if this guide was valuable, please subscribe and share it with someone who is just tired of all the conflicting advice.